Hello everyone and welcome to Finalysis. Today we are breaking down one of my favorite matches from the season, and certainly one of the best matches to come out of New England this season. We knew that the WPI district was going to be one of the most competitive that we saw in New England all season, and it sure paid off. We had two alliances facing off in finals with very different strategies. One was going a more offensive route with three on offense, and the other was playing a more traditional 2D 1-0 strategy. We're breaking down finals match one, which was decided by only three points, and seeing where the consistency was, where some alliances had room to improve, and what we may see at the New England District Championship this weekend, how that might affect it. Coming up, all that and more on Finalysis. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. So let's get into it. Specifically, let's start off with the Blue Alliance. 8626 has one of my favorite autos to come out of the Reefscape season. They start out auto and they shoot the Coral up onto L4 and it makes it sometimes. <laughs> it's not the most consistent auto in the world, but it is my favorite and it certainly sets them up for their play in the teleoperated period. They're going to grab one algae from the reef here and we'll see how that plays out later, but it certainly makes them ready to get into this teleoperated period and play the role that their alliance picked them for. Alliance 2 hits 5.5 in auto, and 8626 has that first algae ready. 8626 is going to spend this match cycling to the net and grabbing algae from wherever they can. They're kind of playing the game that I think that Reefscape is going to evolve into, where they steal algae from the other alliance, and they're really making sure that no one can get that algae that they know that their alliance needs for the win. They're going to be mostly staying on the backside. They're going to pick up a few on this side, starting off by kind of dealgifying the reef here. They score from the backside of the net sometimes, and that's really cool to see as a robot that's not playing the defense role kind of being in the opposite zone, but they're going to get ready here. While they're playing Algae, 125 and 88, some of the top scorers at this event and definitely teams to beat, are going to be working their way around the reef. The way that they're choosing to do this is really interesting. They're working in a clockwise fashion. Some teams have been splitting the reef down the center, choosing to fill L4, L3, L2 separately, but these guys want to make sure that they're getting the most points possible in every match. And that means filling L4 together, filling L3 together, then filling L2 together. 125 also does some of those super cycles in the middle there, opting to grab those algae from the reef when they can and cycle to the net. Their alliance partner 8624 is now going to come over. They have an algae and they are ready. They are on the prowl. They are looking for wherever is available, but also out of their alliance partner's way. We've seen a lot of strategies this season that kind of use the third robot, the defensive robot, as a robot to kind of just get out of the way and put on the other side of the field. 8626 is being well utilized here. They are poaching from the other side. They're making sure that 1768 and 190 can't grab those algae, making sure that their alliance has access to those points. So 88 and 125 are working around clockwise. They are scoring as much points as possible. They are filling up L4, then filling up L3, going for the maximum amount of points while 8626 does this. 8626 is going to miss their last two shots and they don't climb. And part of this strategy, part of what makes it work is that all of these robots kind of work in tune with each other. There are some times that 8626 doesn't have algae available on their side of the field and they need to come back and kind of look at everything that's going on. At approximately 50 seconds left in the match, every blue robot is kind of on that processor side of the field, running into each other. And that definitely 
um, adds to the chaos of what's happening. There's four robots on that side of the field. They're going to want to go somewhere, and a lot of them are going in the same location. 8626 isn't following that clockwise rotation, so everyone kind of bunches up and runs into each other, which does kind of ruin the flow that they had going in this match. Despite this, they're still able to put up points, all of them, and really contribute to the match, because we're at this point in the season where teams are kind of getting it. And as we go into District Champs and as we kind of progress with Reefscape, I feel like we'll be seeing this a lot more, but our driving and our situational awareness, our match strategy, will be smarter. So while they don't end up winning this match, spoilers, I know, <laughs> they do implement a strategy that really adds something to Reefscape here. The fact that they made finals and were only three points off the other alliance really shows that this could be a viable strategy. 8626, if they had scored either one of those in the net, would have swung the match by enough to win the match, and I think that was pretty scary for Red. They did end up adjusting their strategy in the next match, but for right now, let's get into what Red was doing. Red went for a 2-0-1-D strategy, which is kind of what we've been seeing a lot of matches in Reefscape play out as. They have two robots that are really strong at scoring, and one robot that's strong at defense, and also gets those extra points by having a climber and being able to score if need be which they really didn't need it. They needed to be able to slow down the offensive power of the three offense alliance. They chose 3182, who played really good defense, swerve drive, heavy robot, um, really could keep up with the other teams. Smart team too, I've worked with them before. Uh, really great people. So heading into this match, Red has the advantage. Well, actually they're tied at the end of this match, at the end of Autonomous. They both have five Coral up, but 1768 and 190 are both perched and in position to give that kind of half cycle that they get from Autonomous and really uh, up the score. We're not even 10 seconds into this match, and Red is only two away from filling out four. So that's when they start to do these super cycles to grab algae. And you'll see 190 go here and score and then super cycle into the net. 190 can score Coral. 190 can score algae in the net. They've redesigned their robot named Poot, and now they're able to score algae in the net. It might be a bit redundant, but 190 can score algae in the net now, which is new information to many people. 1768, 190, both filling the net um, right after they did that L4 cycle. So L4, L3, both worth more than algae in the net. But because they have this other team, 8626, that's coming in, they're coming to poach the algae, they know that they need to get the algae into the net before 8626 can get to them. So they're choosing to do something that is technically worth less points, but they know that they'll only have the opportunity to do this at this point in the match. Once both of these teams gather all the algae that they're going to gather, they start cycling to L3. They know that they have a minute 29 left in the match. They have the time. They are going to go and get those cycles that are so important to them at this point in the match. They need to fill L3 in order to justify how many algae that they've put in the net, uh, because L3 is worth more than that. But it is the scarce item at this point. So 190, 1768, they are working in the traditional strategy. They've split the reef down the middle. 190 is going to take A and B, and 1768 is going to take G and H on the back, A and B being on the front. They're each going to fill up their respective sides and dealify as needed. They are both extremely capable robots. 1768 and 190 having won another event together at the URI district just the week past. So they have the experience, they practice together, and they know that they're capable. 1768 and 190 uh, at a, about a minute here are going to cycle the last of the algae that is stuck on the reef into the net, um, really securing the fact that uh, they have all the algae on their side that they are going to have. The only other algae that's available right now is kind of by the processor on the blue side. They know that they're not going to get it. So um, 1768 actually going to miss the shot here and instead go for coral because we are under a minute left in the match. There are still spots available on the reef that these two teams know that they have to fill in order to make those algae worth it. So they're going to continue cycling to the reef for about 
uh, 15 more seconds in the match, getting those L3s, getting those points. And this is where Alliance 1 starts to pull away just incrementally. Um, they, are they are cycling at the same speed that Blue is cycling. 86-26 on Blue has kind of run out of algae for them to find that are just lying around. And this is where Alliance 1 will prove why they are the captain and the first pick at this event. Because they really are turning that up, putting those cycles up there. And even still, uh, this match was never more than 10 points away from each other, really at any point. Um, so it's really going to come down to the final wire. Both of these alliances out there, cycling, blue alliance, red alliance, uh, cycling even when the final sonar buzzer, buzzer sounds at 20 seconds. Alliance 1 is up, but blue knows that they can keep cycling, they can keep going. And red knows that they have the advantage in the climbs. And that's because their third robot, uh, 3182, absolute steel, they can still climb. So they know that they have the advantage on the climbs. 190 is going to stay out cycling. And then the last 10 seconds, um, this match really starts to play out as uh, Alliance 1 taking the bacon home here. 3182 climbs. 190 unfortunately misses their climb. Uh, 1768 is up though. And uh, two of the blue robots will miss their climb. So even on climbs, but Alliance 1 will take this match. And it really comes down to... Um, what was familiar to them? How was the synergy working? And what can we do to really optimize the efficiency of this match? Reefscape is so much about the little things your alliance can do to be faster, or something that the other alliance does that slows them down, like having algae in front of their coral station. It comes down to a lot of little things. And this alliance one proved that even with a traditional strategy, not trying anything new really, but knowing where your alliance partner is and how to work with them can really work out for you. Alliance 2 tried something, and I think that we'll see a lot more of this happening at district championships when we have more robots that can cycle to the level that 8626 did. We'll be seeing teams try things that they've never tried before because they have to match the output of that number one seed and really try to go up against them. And it'll be really interesting. I think that this match in particular shows us what Reefscape could become. And I'm interested in seeing it. Do we think this will work at District Champs? Let us know in the comments. And we'll see you next time on Finalysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details.